All right, so let's move on to the other story of the day, which was, um, again, the uh, the comments made by the Celtics today. And everybody by now knows Ime Odoka is very likely in the coming days, who knows how long, timetable is uncertain, going to be named the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. And uh, this what? This the weekend? NBA on TNT is talking about the, potentially this weekend. That's what I heard. Yes, that's possible. So the Celtics... Um, you knew so this is what the story always came down to in, in in a lot of our eyes when we talked about it what matters most uh, beyond what happened which again we just don't have the details so what what matters most as far as impact to the product to the Celtics to, to the on court you know uh, uh you know and, and 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 whether or not they're successful is whether they buy it whether they buy in whether they think it was justified whether they support the Celtics decision we were all at media day and the general vibe we all got was I don't, they don't know, they don't know anything. And I don't know how on board they are here. I think they, the, because they didn't have the benefit of really uh, knowing any details, which there's an, un, you understand why they didn't, but because of that, they couldn't make up their minds, much like a lot of fans can't make up their minds or media because you know so little. Um, you know, it was, he may have violated team policy. Um, uh, you believe it was to having a, a extramarital affair with a subordinate employee and that's it. Uh, there's not much else to it. So the players don't know what to think. And today, Gary Washburn talked to, um, the guys, it was, uh, Him- it was Himmel's back. Himmel's back. Sorry. Himmel's back. I said Washburn, uh, uh, Himmel's back with the globe. Talked to, uh, uh, Marcus at uh, shoot around, I believe. Here's a couple of really interesting quotes here. Uh, this was Marcus about uh, about Ime. His name got slandered and slaughtered. It was, quote, he'll never, probably never coach again. And a couple months later, now he's possibly going to be the coach of one of our biggest rivals. So again, this speaks to this vibe that they were told what he did was so bad, he's never going to coach again. And we obviously have to get rid of him. And they're like, okay, I guess if it's that bad. Uh, and then the other is it really doesn't matter what we say to the front office. We can voice our opinion, but I'm sure it's going to be, yeah, we hear you. And that's it. We obviously thought he'd be back. We obviously thought he'd be back again, Bobby. We talked about this early, and but for him to say, we obviously all thought he'd be back, but the team and organization felt a different way. So here we kind of are um, with this situation. And Jalen Brown talked about it as well, saying he was surprised that that was happening. Also said he was happy to see a black head coach getting another job because that can go in the wrong direction as it has in other cases in the past. So, uh, you know, definitely like, happy for Ime, but still confused with how things went down here in Boston. But Marcus's were definitely the stronger comments. He did also say, "We, I get it too. I get that they couldn't, there's some stuff they couldn't say, I get it. The whole situation is kind of shitty and it kind of is what it is. But there's enough here to lead you to believe a couple of things. They never really got the full story. If they did, they weren't fully on board with it, but they just had to take the organization's word for it. They never really wanted him gone to begin with. And if if you're to believe Marcus here, they actually thought there's a possibility he'd be coming back at some point. And he's very much their guy. They like him. You know, they, they, uh, you know, there's some players that a really strong relationship with him. So I don't know. Is this enough to derail a season? Certainly not if they start playing really well and Joe Missoula does a great job, but this hanging over their heads, particularly if he goes to Brooklyn and is really successful and the Celtics flounder a little bit here, um, that's going to raise some questions. It's going to raise a lot of questions, not only uh, among the players, but also about just the relationship between that front office and the players. I think that, to me, that's where the Big divide time. is going to be very interesting to watch because Marcus basically said, we can tell them whatever the hell – we want and how we feel, but they're basically going to do whatever they want to do. Yep. And to your point, John, I, I, I know without question, there's a lot of stuff that these players weren't told. And that is why they feel the way they do, because based on the information that they've received, they were under the impression that this one year thing would probably be over and that he'd be back in a year. And that I can't imagine that. Well, Bobby, but, but here's the thing, Bobby, we're looking at it from the perspective of media. Uh, and we're looking, we're not, we have not been in those practices. We haven't been 
under the tutelage of Ime Yudoka. So we have a very different relationship with him. And I think that's why the players, I think, are much more inclined to assume that he's going to be back because we're looking at it from a much more, I think, objective, non-personal. We, we're, we're looking at it specifically from the facts that we know, whereas players, right. they're – Factoring that in with also with what they're feeling. They're in their feelings to some extent when it comes right. to, to uh, Ime. And that's why they, I think, felt that he would be back in a year. But the, to me, the bigger concern, if you're the Celtics going forward, is the relationship you have with your players, if you're the owner, if your ownership in the front office. Because if he goes to Brooklyn and they take off and they get to the NBA Finals and this team, for whatever reason, doesn't get nearly as far or they get to the playoffs and they play Brooklyn and get swept or lose, that's going to – the potential that has in a negative sense for some of the core guys in this team like Jalen, like Jason, Marcus, there's no telling how the fallout will be for something like that uh, because they're looking around. And Marcus, I think, in, in the, the Hamelsbach piece – made reference to the fact that apparently what he did was was bad enough to where he couldn't stay here, but it was okay for him to go to Brooklyn and play for another team or coach at another team. Yeah. That's that's a I tough pill to swallow. If you're a title contender and a key piece to that title run that you were envisioning this year is doing the work for someone else and you had control over that. Yeah, I think that's the part that, that everyone's going to be thinking about if you're the Celtics because you're wondering, well, wait a minute. Where did this is? Where does this fall? If the Brooklyn Nets are okay with it, but the Celtics were okay with it, and Bobby, I, I think that the Celtics. I mean, most most players are probably thinking maybe he comes back, maybe not, but they didn't think there would be a judgment this soon. I mean, it's November second. This isn't this isn't what anyone had in mind, especially the players. And I think that you know, Marcus is just sort of being a bit transparent in, in the sense of of showing that maybe the Celtics organization isn't as team or player friendly you know, as, as the rest of the you know, teams in the league, whether we're talking about teams that have top five, top 10 players who can sort of, you know, not manipulate, but have a strong influence on how things are, are run. I mean, I don't think this thing will blow up in their faces, but yeah, I think Sherrod, you're, you're onto something when you say if, if things go south and, and all of a sudden the Celtics are thinking, or, you know, the players are thinking, well, man, Brooklyn Nets, they really got their, you know, their ish together, but we'll, we'll wait a minute. Why did we, lose he made to begin with you know why weren't we consulted why wasn't this you know Look, why didn't we have a, a maybe they could have spent more time trying to figure things out before making that decision to suspend them yeah. for a year you know? here's where here's where here's where it's tricky um whatever he did here is not a brooklyn issue if you don't feel that it was like that he's a like serial harasser a predator does something wholly inappropriate or something that rises to the level of i can't have a person like this in my building okay if right. they don't get did, to be held accountable to that either because well they would, if, they would if right. they would but if they would if this came it, out after on, this makes them this makes people think that it, that it wasn't that bad. If if it, is, that's Brooklyn, the problem. If it Brooklyn came out after the fact that Ime Udo, the Nets would be taking a very large risk. This is where you're starting to stack pieces together. Either the Nets are the biggest dog shit hypocritical, you know, uh, organization with absolutely no scruples whatsoever. Didn't really care no, what they unearthed. No. They just wanted the co they just wanted the coach. That's possible, and I think some people are just kind of guessing that's the case. But honestly, if you're the Nets and you did learn it was actually pretty bad there's a ton of things out there and if they did get out there we would really be uh, under a lot of fire for bringing a person like this into our organization and we would create a big cluster here that's a large risk to be taking on they're doing that, it anyway no <laughs> that's the kind of reaction that, but it's getting. only a risk if you think a bunch of stuff is going to come out but if what you found out was yeah, it was something that probably was bad for the Celtics organization, and I can understand why they might have been pissed for whatever happened there. And yeah, he broke some rules, and probably it was going to be a weird situation to continue for them. This is not the type of thing that necessarily has carryover, so we're totally fine with it. It's their problem. It's not our problem. We're not bringing somebody into our fold that I feel is an unsavory person and this and that. It's a guy who made a mistake and did something he shouldn't have done. We're confident here it's a clean slate, and that's not the kind of thing that I'm worried about because it's just the information doesn't you know scream to me that like okay we're, we're 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 taking a massive risk with this guy so i don't believe it's just a nets thing i think if there were five head coaching vacancies throughout the course of the year Ime Odoka's name comes up right away because that's not their problem um with, with the celtics though it's very clear they just wanted to wash their hands with this and move it move it along and just 
push it out the door and and have it no longer be their issue. And I think they're thrilled uh, to have this happen. From a player's perspective, it's like, so that's it? You know, you just wanted Ime out the door. That's it. He's gone. What was this whole, like, he might come back? It's just a suspension. You feel, as Sherrod said, a little bit misled here. Um, and moreover, from the Celtics, you also feel it doesn't matter where 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 you work. What the if if your bosses are like, we really can't tell you this, even if they are justified in saying that. You feel like okay, that's cool, so you don't trust us, and that's going to create a little bit of friction there too. Which is, we took you at your word. You said it was bad enough that he had to move on, uh, so we had no choice but to take you at your word because you wouldn't give us any details. And now these guys are totally fine with him coaching. Something doesn't add up. And that's how they're going to feel. And that's how they clearly feel. It's a feel. tough situation. That's how they clearly feel right now. They feel that I don't know if what he made did was so bad that you guys should have whacked him in the first place. That's their vibe right now. And if that's the case, that's the problem. Well, part of the problem, John, is that the facts that I think the players have been given are things that, if we're being completely transparent, have been happening throughout NBA franchises yes. for the longest time. And that, I think, is part of the thinking why players thought, okay, what he did was wrong, and he should be punished. Punish him, and let's get back to playing basketball with him as our coach. Yep. Whereas the Celtics took the position, and, and again, you can argue whether they were right or wrong. He will never coach here again. He yep. will never coach here again. And we're not going to fire him because if we fire him, then we've got to work out some type of financial arrangement. Or, you know, if we – so we'll, we'll just suspend him for the year, and if, he, if another job comes open, we'll have the option – of trying to I think that's where we get not. stuck. If if What's they fi- if they fired him, do you think the reaction would have been different? What, what reaction from the players? From everybody. I think people I, would have understood it a lot more. I think I think pe- I, I think if they fired him, I think the reaction it would have become yesterday's news. <clears throat> it would have been it would have died a very quick death because clearly the, the the thinking would have been that they uncovered something that was so heinous that he did that they're just giving us kind of the little you know, drips of what happened because the true essence of what happened is so much heinous, more heinous than that, that they had to fire him. And that might have raised a lot of questions about any team that would take him on. But by suspending him for a year, it gave them the option of potentially getting compensation if they really wanted to, if another team was interested. And it also gave them enough room to just kind of, if let's say Joe Mazzulla was an absolute disaster, which he hasn't been, you could, in theory, potentially bring him back. Uh, That's where but, this gets tough because this wasn't a basketball. Like no, I don't think the Celtics. Bad, no. Yeah, I don't think the Celtics handled this on a basketball level. Once and that's and that's what the and that's the issue the players have because they yeah. look at this from a basketball perspective. You're right. They're trying to win a championship. They're trying to be the last team standing, and they know that Eme had a lot to do with them having that shot, and they were looking forward to running it back and, and seeing if they could win a couple more ga- literally win two more games than they did. That's the last thing. Season. You could have a problem with what Ime did and still be of the mind if you're in the Celtics organization. Could, was there not something else you could have done here? Was this the only option? The Celtics reacted, again, with the harshest penalty in the history of the league um, in lieu of firing because firing had potential legal ramifications if you tried to withhold money down the line. So the suspension was, in effect, firing him by basically holding him hostage <laughs> and that's until, what another, some until the another team yeah. came calling. And this is they willed this to happen while under suspension. Anybody wants to talk to him, hell's yeah. And then I'm free of this and I don't have to worry about paying him anymore. And he's gone and he's off our books and we don't have to deal with it. And our conscience is clean. Uh, that The Celtics wanted this to happen. They obviously weren't. We knew that the players evidently didn't. Um, so uh, to them, they feel a little bit misled.